Under the Veteran Rapid Retraining Assistance Program, nearly $400 million was invested to pay for online education for vets. But problems have plagued the program, and only a small percentage of vets actually landed new jobs. Lisa Ryan is a reporter for The Washington Post and talked to several veterans in the program. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to the program. Thanks so much for having me, Mimi. So why was the program created, and how was it intended to work? So this was really a, a, a great idea that uh, a bipartisan group of lawmakers in Congress in the House had uh, to help veterans who had lost their jobs in the pandemic. And it was you know, vital because so many people were so worried about veterans and everyone else. And there were two big, big tranches of money uh, that uh, that went to both the federal government and just, you know, average Americans. One was the CARES Act in early 2020 under President Trump. The other was the American Rescue Plan under President Biden. And this idea for a retraining program for veterans had come much earlier more in the Trump um, period, but it never really got into the, it got in, it did not get into the early uh, rescue bill. So it got into the American Rescue Plan, which was in 2021. And the idea was actually, it was modeled around a program that VA had, um, had done in the Great Recession. So about 10 years earlier, where veterans would get money in the, to enroll in a year long retraining program that was more uh, vocational, more, you know, about, you know, being a barber, uh, switching careers, to something in the computer, in the tech realm, uh, maybe coding, uh, maybe um, uh, an apprenticeship, you know, maybe something in the trades. Anyway, so that was the idea behind it. So one of the biggest problems of the program ran into was the quality of the education. What were some of the issues that you found out about? That's right. So VA, I mean, the backdrop here is that VA has always struggled. Um, it offers wonderful, generous, you know, education benefits, and the GI Bill is obviously the most well-known forum for that. But it's really always struggled with these non-for-profit, I'm sorry, for-profit schools who really take advantage of the fact that there's a lot of federal money in the veteran space. And so a lot of the GI Bill schools um, had had a lot of issues with deceptive practices, you know, telling veterans they were going to get, um, you know, a certain kind of education and and jobs afterwards, and not give providing it. And in this case, um, there there was an investigation that really kind of prompted us to do the story that Senator Durbin of Illinois um, had had triggered um, of a school based in Chicago called Future Tech Career Institute, and this was a a tech school where they promised veterans, okay, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna get you jobs. And what they did was they enrolled, they just kind of inhaled more than 300 veterans in the course of about, about 10 days. And this made VA suspicious. But even before that happened, veterans were complaining to VA as well as to the state of Illinois, um, which ultimately did an investigation about how, you know, the classes were not what they were made out to be. Um, you know, there were too many students that, that they would let students in, you know, as the classes were ongoing and then the teachers would, would sort of just dial back everything to accommodate a new student. There weren't enough um, materials. And, and, and Lisa, I wonder, you know, did you talk to the schools involved? What what was their response? Yeah, we did. We did. And and just to say, Future Tech was not the only school, you know, that, this, that these practices happened at. There were... Um, I think there were, we found something on the order of 90 altogether whose approvals from states were pulled, although not all were for deceptive practices. Um, others were for administrative failures, which clearly are in a different category. But Future Tech responded to us um, at length and basically called these one offs, just called them anomalies, you know, and minimized the effect on veterans and said, you know, this really wasn't really a big deal. You know, this was just a fluke. Some of them, some of the issues they actually blamed on VA, but I think um, you know, the students, you know, from what they told us, uh, they really didn't get, you know, really a great, a great retraining. Uh, and it was very hard for them to switch to other programs by this point. And, and Lisa, Congress created the program to serve more than 17,000 veterans, but a lot fewer than that actually signed up. Why, why mm -hmm. was that? 
Right. So, so the program still has a couple more months. It's supposed to end in Dece December 15th. So things could change, but basically, um, you know, we found that um, way less than half of that number um, have enrolled in the program. And I think it owes to a couple of things we, in our reporting, we discovered, you know, one is that VA did not really advertise this very well. And it's hard admittedly, you know, there are a lot of veterans, they're far flung in the country. And, but it's, it was really mostly just out there on VA's website. And that's pretty hard if you're a veteran, you know, to, to go through the website, which is complicated, you know, and all these federal websites just kind of get wrapped up in the bureaucracies. That's one thing. And I think, you know, a number of lawmakers were pretty upset about that. But I think the other real issue here, which is probably more of the salient problem, you know, is just that the unemployment rate for veterans when this, um, the law was passed that included this program and, you know, mandated it to start up. So the unemployment rate by then in, you know, mid 2021 was quite low and veteran unemployment rate is always lower than that of non-veterans. So I think right now it's something on the order of 2.5%. And, you know, whereas um, non-veteran rate is in the three, somewhere around 3.5%. And, and Lisa, is there any money left over from the program? And, and if so, what happens to it now? Sure. So as of August, which is our story ran in August, so we checked in with VA right before the story ran, and they acknowledged that only about half the money has been spent. And so, you know, I think it's possible, but unlikely that in the coming three months, you know, uh, a lot of this, you know, all of this money will be spent. And what's going to have to happen is it'll have to go back to the treasury at that point, which is really not ideal. VA can't use it for other, other purposes. All right, Lisa, thanks so much for being on the program. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.